Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at investing in tech funds which might offer some opportunities. So you could invest in individual technology companies but I feel that's time consuming. There's a research bias where most of the information comes from the company itself so it's got this positive spin on it. You'll then have a poor appreciation of the downside risk of the company and just the volatility of share prices and the psychology of dealing with sharp share price declines could really impact your trading. The exception is that if you work in tech and have an edge, but don't confuse luck and picking a few good winners over a few years of trading with having an edge. And when I look at people on Twitter, I think there's very few people that have an edge in technology stocks. So you could then use the CanSlim framework made famous by William O'Neill in his book How to Make Money in Stocks. Uh, if you've got a system for sifting through companies, then that would be really useful. But I'm more interested in funds, in either passive ETFs, in open-ended investment companies, or investment trusts, and I've done a video that gives an explanation as to the differences between those. So if we look first of all at a passive ETF, it's IITU, the S&P 500 information technology sector. The great thing about the S&P 500 is that for inclusion, companies must have two quarters in a row of positive earnings and pass some committee scrutiny as to actually how they got those earnings. So for example, Tesla was initially denied entry to the S&P 500 because it was getting profits from trading carbon credits rather than actually making cars. The ETF will be market cap weighted, so you'll always have the winners and not the losers. You kind of always come out on top and it's also low cost. But the big downside is a huge weighting towards Apple, 24%, large weighting towards Microsoft, 19%. So it's not really that diversified. And if you look at the downside and what could go wrong, I'm thinking, well, you know, Apple products are expensive. They might have trouble dealing with China, might have trouble with their supply chain. There's just things that could go wrong with this. So next up, we could look at the Legal and General Global Technology Index. This is an open-ended investment company. It's got a few extra things from around the world, but again, we've still got this concentration problem and it's not much better. So this is an active open-ended investment company. Fidelity Global Technology. So we've got Microsoft and Apple, yeah, they're in there, but on much lower weightings, and it feels much more like a proper portfolio. Um, the problem is that these active funds underperform the index if Apple and Microsoft do well. But if there's a bit of a sea change in terms of who's growing the fastest in the tech sector, then, then that can all change around. So Fidelity do some quite useful reporting and they say, okay, this is where we're overweight, this is where we're underweight, and you can look at it and say, yeah, okay, I agree with that, or, well, maybe I don't. So they have a slightly different definition of technology where they will include Alphabet, which is actually, uh, it's Google, but it's in the communications sector. They're saying, well, we'll call it tech, uh, and then stuff like My MasterCard, which the index is saying is tech, they're saying, well, yeah, it's a credit card, duh. Now, imagine this. Imagine you could get something like Fidelity, but on a 10% discount to the net asset value. Well, welcome to Alliance Technology Trust, which is clearly an investment trust, and you can just ride the price to net asset value cycle. So it's got some quality large cap holdings. It supports themes like cybersecurity and semiconductors, and it's got mid cap exposure. It's more volatile than other funds, but if you catch it when it's unpopular and when it's sort of uh, yeah at a low point in the cycle, you could do well because ultimately it will uh, make new highs and it will have times in its future when uh, it is actually doing pretty well. It's also got the potential to buy back shares, so that's useful when managing the price to an asset value discount. There's unfortunately a performance fee associated with the fund, which is a real pain, uh, but you have to pay quite heavily to get real expertise in this area. 
So another alternative is Polar Capital Technology Investment Trust, PCT. This more closely follows the Global Technology Index. Again, it's got a performance fee. It's got some key themes which I'm listing there. So it will diverge a bit from the overall index and it will have areas that it wants to overweight in. So now let's look at a possible strategy for investing in those investment trusts. So I'd say once a month, read the fact sheet. If you can't be bothered to do that, don't invest. Look at the discount to net asset value. So we're not looking at things daily, just once a month. If the discount to net asset value is greater than 10%, drip feed an amount into that fund. So that minimum thousand pounds, that's what makes it worthwhile with the brokerage commission. And then repeat this for a maximum of 10 times. So you can kind of average down as it were, but you're not gonna do this infinitely. So uh, you know, if your initial stake, I'm looking to maybe put in 10K, then okay, we're doing it 1K over 10 times. Otherwise, do nothing. So we're ideally kind of pound cost averaging and we're, we're sort of uh, moving into this position. And then when the discount net asset value has disappeared and the price is greater than the moving averages, uh, and when there's loads of positive bullish articles about these investment trusts, then you sell. And you'd aim to hold for maybe five years. So if you're sitting six months time, looking at a bit of a loss on it all, you're thinking, well, wait a minute, you know, I'm, I've got a five year time frame and I understand there's just ebbs and flows of the market and I'm prepared to just, just ride it out. So the monthly commentaries. So if you still want to invest in individual companies, then the monthly commentaries might give you clues as to what to buy. When professionals are saying they like a stock, it can be useful. It's probably better than uh, a journalist in a newspaper giving a stock a good write-up. And institutional fund manager support is useful to keep a share price buoyant. So I hope you liked the video. Let me know what's your thoughts. What's your approach to the market at the moment? How are you buying or selling your individual funds? Uh, subscribe, hit the like button. You can email me if you're interested in portfolio coaching and you can follow me on Twitter at Ian Shadrach.